Good evening. This is the Harbor and Shellfish Advisory Board, Tuesday, March 7th, 2023. I'd like to call this meeting to order. And can we have a, an approval of tonight's agenda, please? A motion. Motion to approve the agenda by Scott Anderson. Seconded by Ginger Andrews. Motion to approve tonight's agenda by Scott Anderson. Seconded by Ginger Andrews. All in favor, Mr. Anderson? Aye. Ms. Andrews? Aye. Mr. Bossy? Aye. Mr. Fonzuto? Aye. Mr. Brace? Aye. Chair votes aye. Draft minutes of February 21st. Has everyone had a chance to review them and are there any revisions? Do we have a motion to approve them, please? So move, Dave Bossy. The second is Scott Anderson. Motion is made by Dave Bossy to approve the draft minutes of February 21st as written, seconded by Mr. Anderson. All in favor, Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Bossy? Aye. Ms. Andrews? Aye. Mr. Franzuto? Aye. Mr. Brace? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Candidates letter to the editor. See you sent out. Uh, uh, did you send that out to I did. Mr. Balling? I don't know if he ran it because it wasn't here. It's right. in the paper. Right. I hope he did. I did not see it in last week's paper, uh, but I didn't scan the whole newspaper. But if it was, didn't notice it in the letter bag. But thank you for getting that out. Anything else on that? Marine Department report. Do we have anything? No, or any recommendation. Natural resources. Tara, please. Yes. Um, so since last time I submitted a um, report via email that had the bushel count. Um, and so then we hit um, school break. So nothing has been turned in or put in the computer since then. So um, the number still remains the same. I think that was reported on email, which is like around 3,500 bushels, which is low. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping since this is March, last day of scalping, unless there's an extension called for, everyone will have everything in. And so what I've been doing is taking the warden's reports um, and going against the uh, trip reports that they're required to turn in every month and just kind of seeing how those compare. Um, and then, you know, there's some days where we, things were not recorded um, that I'm trying to account for as well. So hopefully, you know, we'll end the season with 5,000 bushels or above kind of what we expected. Um, I'm not really sure how many guys are going because I've been gone a week, um, but I think um, for the next meeting, we should have a better update than that. Yesterday, I walked down um, Gray's Road, did that little loop, went down onto the land bank property and looked out. It was blown, but there was somebody over in Second Bend. Yeah. I didn't see anybody else. Mm -hmm. thought maybe it was Dylan. I know that, yeah, I know there were a couple of people out. There was um, only one person in Madigan today, nobody yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll see what the season ends up with and um, we'll be doing surveys in the spring. Um, so that'll give us an idea of what is left also, um, you know, going into the summer. All right, so uh, the Maya Comet dredge contract did get executed. Um, we hired Geosyntec consultants. Um, they were allowed to start on February 1st and they have until January 31st of 24 and the contract amount was $369,000. Uh, the sediment transport um, project, we, before we left for break, we turned in our independent rankings um, and sent them to the procurement office. And the bids that um, were submitted were Arcadis, Geosyntec, Woods Hole Group, and GZA. And I have not heard of an update since then as to what is going on in procurement and what, what bid got selected. Um, all right. 
there's the for Sacaja Pond, there is um, a eco enhancement and resilient um, grant going on that involves putting uh, reef balls on a portion of the shoreline to kind of stabilize the roadway there. Um, and that is right now, um, that's with the Woods Hole Group. They're going to be doing that. They're going through a um, quality assurance plan um, for the reef fall portion. They're looking at the standard operating procedures um, and looking at, you know, how we're going to collect the data and the analysis to make sure it's sound. But that contract, I think, is for $158,000 for the living shoreline and the road stabilization. Um, all right, so back in the hatchery, the bioreactor, we restarted it. Um, we're concentrating on trying to get our densities high because that was the whole point of having the bioreactor to not just have like a continuous supply that we don't have to do a lot to, but also have this, this high quality supply of algae. So um, we did pretty good on our first run, but I think that we need to play around with it a little bit more to, to improve our output. Um, all right, so our traditional algae system is up and running also, and we made improvements to that. Um, and that is doing fabulous with those improvements. Um, our hatchery production schedule, we're going to start bringing broodstock, which are the adult shellfish in on March uh, 21st. And then again, on May 8th, um, we're starting out with oysters. So we're going to condition those for eight weeks and then they'll get spawned. Um, and then, oh wait, yeah. And then on the 24th of April, we'll bring in our first group of scallops. And those only take two weeks to condition. So we'll spawn those early May. Um, and one thing that we're focusing on this year for our timed releases with the scallops are we're looking at um, temperatures. So we're trying to time everything with a temperature of um, 22 degrees Celsius and above, but also timing it with the chlorophyll levels, which is just, you know, it's a warm time of year where there's good food in the water, basically is what it translates to. Um, and in the past, we've done releases really early. We've done them in May, we've done them in June, um, but looking at all the water quality data for the past 10 years, seems like those conditions aren't happening until at least July 1st now. It's, everything's kind of shifted and moved back a little bit. So most of our releases we're trying to do in July and August this year, whereas before we did June and July. So we're going to try and do that, but we'll keep an eye on the water quality and make sure that you know things are on track with what we think is going to happen. Um, and also like the releases that we've done in the past that have been pretty successful have also had those conditions. Um, so we've been tracking those and trying to uh, kind of recreate some of those situations. So the first base scallop spawn that we're gonna do, um, we will grow those out in the hatchery. Um, they won't be released. So we'll you know grow them out in the hatchery. They'll be in our outdoor system and then ultimately end up in spat bags um, to grow larger. Uh, let's see. Employment for the hatchery. We have received intern applications. Um, we're reviewing those and um, the we have two full time positions posted right now. They close March 10th. It's for the assistant biologist and the water quality specialist. Um, so we'll hire those first and then the interns second. Um, we're hoping to have that completed by the end of March. It's going to be a really quick turnaround, hopefully. Um, the Nantucket Boys and Girls Club, we're working on a grant with them called the Great Oyster Explorers for the summer. It's an eight week kind of oyster adventure program um, where we're gonna do two to three hours a week where they're going to um, kind of grow their own oysters. So we're gonna be doing spawns with them. They're gonna grow them and follow this cohort of oysters put them on oyster shell at the hatchery, and then ultimately they're gonna end up on the Nantucket Conservation Foundation's reef and pulpice. Um, it's gonna be limited to 15 kids because we don't have a lot of staff, but they're gonna be, they're gonna get all their own snorkel gear, wetsuit. We're, we have um, the community pool reserved to teach these kids how to snorkel with a life jacket on because probably, I don't know, a lot of them might not be able to swim yet. So we're just trying to, 
create like equity and inclusion for kids that can't swim. Plus Pulpus Harbor reef site is like two feet of water. So um, we're gonna do that just to kind of show them what scientists do and how we collect data underwater. So that's kind of a new different thing. Um, we're working again with the Great Harbor Yacht Club on their Youth Foundation Week, which is July 17th through the 21st. Um, most of the Nantucket Island scientists are involved in this, just um, providing a week of basically marine ecology um, intensive look at Nantucket. Um, the eelgrass plan, um, the eelgrass restoration plan, we have a meeting this week to go over the first draft um, with the eelgrass expert, Bob Orff. He's done all the restoration in Chesapeake Bay. Um, and we're working on trying to get that in like a draft form before we introduce it to other entities on the island to review. Um, then the Land Council is proceeding with their eelgrass restoration this summer on Hussey Shoal and Fifth Bend. Um, I will be providing um, scallops for them for stocking in Fifth Bend since it will be a closed area. They're going to do some survival studies um, in, in that, that area. Uh, as I mentioned before, in Nantucket Harbor, we're doing a spring dive assessment, which we've never done before. Um, we're going to look at the existing population going into the summer, assess the scallops that weren't caught this season, um, look at mortalities between the spring and the fall, because we also do all of these surveys in the fall as well. So there's, I think I've talked to you about stuff going on in the Peconic where they're they're dying because of high temperatures and low oxygen. This is a good way to kind of monitor the stock from two points in time. Um, and lastly, I have, I'm going to Baltimore at the end of this month for the National Shellfish Association meeting. And I'm giving a presentation on what Nantucket, the town of Nantucket specifically is doing for shellfish and work and stuff. So I would love to include a slide for the Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board with what your mission is and what you guys do and maybe what you're currently working on. So if you would like that as part of the presentation, I would love to include it. Um, when, when do you go? I go the end of March. Okay, you're looking at me now. So you can that. give me the verbal stuff for the slide and I can <laughs> make the slide for you. Um, you know, just kind of a paragraph or it's up to you. You don't have to do it. You can do it if you want. I think it'd be kind of cool. Steve, you already anointed me secretary and now you're up. I didn't I didn't <laughs> vote on that. Okay. So that's my report. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay. Um I have one idea. I don't know if it's been thought of before, but since we're in this unusual situation of scallopers not being able, scallopers having a hard time finding places to sell their scallops. And there's probably a good chance that there's more scallops in the harbor than than people are going to go out and catch them. I mean, how far into the springtime could you ex could we extend the recreational season, have people go back out? I mean, I mean, I think we learned some lessons this season with with everything. Um, you know, I think that there's a reason now because the fishing pressure is low and there aren't that many people going. If it is perceived that there's a good stock for harvesting, maybe we should talk about upping the, the bushel limit, um, you know, especially at the beginning of the year or even at the end of the year. You know, if people, if there are some people to open it, give people, you know, 10 bushels a day or something or whatever. Um, I think we'll know a lot more after this this year in the survey, you know, moving into the next season. But yeah, I agree. I mean, there's. I'm thinking about right now. Yeah. Extend the season a week for everybody well, and see who goes out. I mean, I mean, it has to be in the past. I believe it's been the fishermen requesting it. Right. It's right. not just like our department saying, OK, Bonanza open. But we could recommend it. We can recommend it and see what happens. Yeah. Or we could. Um, you can pull the fishermen. Maybe they're like, God, I can't wait till it's over. Or maybe they're like, yeah, there's a lot more out there and I can still go after it. I mean, yeah, maybe that's something we can talk about with Sam from NSA. She might be a good person to kind of pull the fishermen and see what they want to do. Is there not a time frame of when we were to request the and extension? We've I mean, done some emergency extensions. The state has to approve it, don't they? Yeah. So. I don't I'll have to check and see, but I I recall in the past that there have been some like 
I feel like there's been one well, or two last minute. We did it, what, three years ago? I think it was prior to COVID we extended the season because because of uh, the, mm -hmm. the amount of uh, days they couldn't go out because of cold. I'm thinking maybe we didn't have that many cold days, but we certainly had a lot of windy days. And there's so many variables to this, uh, like mentioning uh, increasing the bushel limit. Some guys, uh, the older guys, uh, when the clock strikes 1130, doesn't matter what they have, they head in. And and uh, this is what several of them have said to me this season. And uh, so the bushel limit may not uh, benefit there. Uh, another variable could be opening Saturday. Uh, and of course, extending one week, if not, I would suggest two, if we're gonna go for an extension. Of course, that also depends on how warm things get maybe as well. Uh, but um, and certainly reaching out to uh, Samantha is a wonderful idea because she has a connection with so many of them. Yeah, I mean, I think in the past it's been, you know, a, a good group of scholars interested in the extension and they all kind of came to Shab and requested it. And I don't want to suggest something that people aren't interested in doing, you know, like What's if this? there's only one or two people going, like, I don't know. We want to, you know, ask the state for a favor, but well, well, plus if 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 you think you might be moving seed, you know, that'd be in addition to going an extra week. Then they'd also be moving seed. Maybe they don't want to do both, or I mean, if maybe if they if we get the sense that no no commercial scholars want to go an extra week or whatever. We could might still push for recreational. Doesn't mean that everyone's going to run right out there, but at least, I mean, I guess if you were recreational now and you wanted scallops, I've seen posts on social media where some people have been going out, you know, a lot religiously. <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't realize. Um, I do have a meeting with Sam on Friday, so perhaps I can bring this up to her and cool. see. Yeah, we always go out at the end of March. It's a religious thing, so love to see it extended. Mr. Franzuto. Yeah, I think Tara's idea is good. If she can get a sense from the fishermen through the Shellfish Association, that would that would be the way to go. I mean, I, you know, one or two week extension makes sense. You got to start worrying about the weather and the water warming up and the scallops quality going down maybe that's not an issue because it's been so bloody cold but uh if she can get a sense through the shellfish association then you know i think you could make a strong case for a week or two week extension i i'm not sure um i don't think we've ever done it that we've included the recreational portion in there because i don't think that that's going to carry the day as far as dmf is concerned i may be wrong but uh, if the com if there's a commercial interest, that's the way to do it. But Dave, through you, Mr. Chairman, Dave. Yeah. Um, if you're extending the season. Oh, it would extend. Yeah, it would extend for recreational too. I'm just saying right. to make the case that there's a bunch of recreation. I don't know that there's a bunch of recreational people clamoring to go out there. Okay. Um, I just don't think it would make the make the case. I, I think if you if you said that, hey, due to due to weather conditions this past winter and the wind and the cold, and the commercial guys are are, are wanting to and are willing to go, um, I think you could carry the day on that. I see. Um, I'm just looking at 2018. The select board authorized a two week extension, but it took. Um, the state rep, Dylan Fernandez, to talk to the DMF to get it done, mm -hmm. like, short notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But isn't that how it is, though? Because you don't know if you're going to do it until it is short notice. I mean, sometimes I feel like if it's a good season, some people have come in early, like February at least, to, like, yeah. let us know. Yeah. No one's come in. It's been a while since you've had any scholars to come in and see us for anything. So. <laughs> Are there any left? Well, Some, somewhere along the line there, I 
remember there being some negative feedback about uh, the late request. Um, <clears throat> Carl, I asked last time I was at Carl Sherlin's shanty, maybe 10 days ago, he mentioned that uh, getting a little slim, but what I see on the bench looks really good. Uh, uh, classic adults and healthy looking eyes. So, uh, you know, Carl sometimes um, can be kind of like, uh, you know, been fishing at mystery rip kind of guy. So, uh, <laughs> but um, if if there are, you know, a good stock of adults out there and interest, I think it should be pursued. This is a great idea. Thank you, Tara. Any other discussion from the board? Questions on natural resource report? Um, Mr. Chair. Oh, go ahead, Peter. So does does the board want me to write something up um, showing what we've been doing for Tara to have a slide? Just a, you know, bullet items type of thing. Oh, you've done it for the annual report. Uh, you could review that. Uh, anything we've done recently should be fresh on your mind, I imagine. So, you know, some bullet points, like you say. Uh, yes sure. yes, yes sure. you can also send me your annual report yeah. and i can make it it's up to you yeah mr chairman mr franzuto yeah two two things on that yeah i think we've got enough bullet points that tara could build a slide you know with some you know one or two lines of background about the board been ex in existence since you know the mid 70s and this is what we're working on uh, I thank her for um, including us or willing be willing to include us. Um, and I got some other questions after we're done with this topic for Tara. Mr. Chairman. Ginger, please. Well, I think it's a good idea. Um, and I appreciate Peter's willingness to, to um, to make the bullet points and Tara for uh, including us. Um, yeah, I think it. the more people know we exist, the better. Thank you, Ginger. Mr. Franzuto, next question. Yes, sir. Um, okay, um, Tara, off the top of your head, do you know how many cubic yards are going to dredge out of my compound? Um, I do not, but I can find out. And where are they going to, what are they going to do with the dredge spoils? I'd be willing to bet that that's not uh, compatible to sell. So I have a feeling it's going to go for landfill cover or something like that. Um, when I was reading that proposal, I mean, it's been a couple months since I read it, but they were going to do testing to determine what type of disposal was appropriate for it. And they had listed at least seven different options for places around the island to be discussed. Okay. Um, do you have any, uh, do you have any plans to run some coags through the hatchery? I didn't make any plans for it this year just because of the Boys and Girls Club project. Um, it's probably gonna be taking up most of our tanks. Okay, well, it, it, the Boys and Girls Club thing and the Great Harbor thing for the kids, I think is fantastic. But in the back of your mind, try to remember to run some calls, would you? I will, and maybe I'll do a mini run for you. You can tell me where you want them. <laughs> Another mystery. <rip. laughs> not for me. That's not funny. No, yeah, it is. Thank you. I, Mr. Chairman, I, I have a question. Yes, Ginger. Uh, I, I wondered what uh, time of year they were going to be doing this uh, in my comments. Um, the contract is active now, and they have until January 31st to finish it, but I have not heard of when the official timeline is going to start. Mm. 
Okay. Let me see if I can bring it up and I'll have it maybe by the end of this meeting. Yeah. And where, did, where is where is the dredging actually happening? Um, there are different what part of the pond. I mean, different parts of the pond. Is there a map available? I didn't know you guys were going to want this information. Let's see if I can bring it up. I'm wondering if uh, I'm wondering if there'll be. Do you think that opening the pond will be part of that? Maybe. Not a good idea. Yeah, if you guys want to go on, it might take me a minute to find this stuff. Okay. Well, there might be some other questions. <laughs> Don't want to overload you. We'll go back. Um, I had one question myself. I did you have more questions for Tara, Mr. Franzuto? No, sir. Okay. Uh, any public comment on Marine or National Resource Department report? I'm just going to have one question to go back to for Tara. Old business brochure email discussion. Mr. Brace sent out uh, the email or uh, to all of us to review. Everybody happy with that and uh are we ready to send it forward some so, updates uh, mr franzuto dave did you have a question franzuto or a comment we need a yeah i have uh, some Dave, yeah. Did you lose me? Kind of, maybe. We can still hear you, but you're a little broken up. Contact again a couple times with the tax collector. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, Dave, you're coming in and out there. Uh, Want to start over again and maybe it'll clean up. All right. I've been in contact with tax collector a couple times. Um, apparently the way his inserts are printed is they're printed by their printer who does the um, bills. And that's how they get folded and stuffed in the envelopes by their contractor that does that. So um, we need to talk further about what, what we want on our one page. Um, and I guess there's an option to have a thing called a buck slip. And a buck slip, I learned, is that small quarter page thing that they use for the uh, contribution for the scholarship. And also that's also what the garden uh, farm people use as their insert. So I guess we need to discuss, do we think we need a full page uh, in color or could we get away with one of these buck slips? Um, and I talked to Jeff Carlson today and he's agreed to offset uh, any printing costs. Um, and in reading Peter's email uh, that he's proposing to send to um, Erica, uh, I, I, based on this, this updated information, um, I think we can revise. We, we don't need the sentence in there that says, we also need to know how to get our page insert printed because now we know how to, how we're doing that. Okay. And um, make the comment about natural resources uh, that, 
uh, natural resources will offset the cost through their uh, operating budget. Um, okay. Um, but so, Mr. Chairman, I think we need to have the discussion about how how big the page should it be one full page in color, or could we get away with a a buck slip? size page that gives the information that we want and uh, or do we think that you know on, you know I, I think that's what we have to discuss as far as the map that Dave Bossy came up with and the links and everything so what what's your what's your pleasure on that Mr. Chairman? Well are we ultimately are we sending a printed map out or are we leading uh, the people we're notifying uh, to a map on GIS or both? At this point, uh, you know, in Peter's letter, uh, we're working to produce the map as an insert. And, and of course, that uh, uh, I've always felt that having something in hand and, and how we, I, I haven't even looked at this map, I'm sorry, but uh, is there something we need to revise on the map or do we need to get a, a red line in there? Uh, as Mr. Brace mentions in the letter, uh, uh, getting property owners to understand which outfall pipe carries their potential pollution into the harbor uh, and to which section of the harbor uh, watershed that their property is in. Um, so what, it, the, what, what, what the print people I've told them is I'm going to get them a mock-up of what we want by, um, they need it by March 13th, which is next week. But I, I think, I think at this point in time, well, it, it's up to the board, but um, I don't think we need to redline anything. I think we need to get them the link and tell them that we're going to have a meeting. So we need to be scheduling that now. So it, it can be included on this page that they print. Uh, so, you know, it, it's up to the board whether they want the map that Dave Bossy came up with, um, or do we just give them the link and tell them we're going to have a meeting in, in May or June at the community room to to further show them how to use it. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Anderson first, I'll be back to you. Okay. Yep. I think we I think we need to include the map and also because people aren't going to go to the link. It get, can get cumbersome at times. So they may go to it if they get intrigued. I think we need to at least let them know something exists for the harbor the harbor. Yes. And there is another one, one for Madigat and a couple other areas too, showing watersheds. Um, the trouble is you'll end up doing two sides because I don't know how you do this and then put a narrative on top of well, Maybe you can figure out how to superimpose it. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I think, you know, this is a teaser and we're saying, look, here's the harbor watershed. This is where most people live to live around a harbor live we're not forgetting i can make the change in the in the email but we're not forgetting about madiket but we're starting here and and of course we're going to need to put information on the links on there and whatever else we want on there and i think it's important that you know, we decide that if the email is done or whatever and get it out because then if we can hear back from Erica, then we know, okay, yes, it's possible. I guess maybe we would say um, on the sheet that goes in the tax bill in May or June, but it'd be great if we had a date, you know, because then people would have that. Because if we don't say that this is the date that we're doing it, then do we have to do another mailing to tell them that, or do we have to do an ad in the paper or how would, how are people going to find out? So, Mr. Franzuto, you being uh, more aware of 
how many outfall pipes there there are and where they are. May I ask, are there any beyond Monomoy from Monomoy to Pacama Point? Say, yeah, there there are. Oh, there are. Okay, from from, from where? From Monomoy to Pacama Point or Walwinet. Yeah, but 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 they're not tied to the storm drain system. They're right. tied to private property. So, yeah. All right, uh, because you know my idea of the red lining would simply go from uh, this map, uh, this Harbor Watershed Protection District starts uh, at the West Jetty and uh, comes inland quite a ways and and around uh, uh, you know as far back as as the high school as well, um, but uh, you know ha having a red line on the backside simply uh depicting it to me it makes the area look larger uh because it is large inside that red line to the harbor and and uh uh to get people to simply look at the map and see what street they're on uh which is all you're going to do from this particular map uh but knowing you're inside of that red line hopefully waves a little red flag. Um, so uh, it, I think it would be nice to simply add that red line on the outside. Uh, um, as far as this watershed, you know, going almost to like Alter Rock, uh, you know, we can certainly keep it and use that, but uh, our biggest concern is, is the, the highly concentrated areas um and the storm drains uh but if there are some private outfall pipes uh out in the uh rural areas then certainly uh you know it would be nice if those were actually shown but uh it'd be nice yeah, if they were all shown but yes they're they're, they're, pri they're primarily for they're primarily for um wetland they're they're not they're not storm drain outfalls they're wetland pipe no i call it that, that's a question for dave bossy if if he can either put the red line on there or use the watershed instead of using that map use the watershed map what what do you think dave and 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 the other thing is do you how does everybody feel about this thing having to be in color because if it has to be in color i think it going to drive the price up i don't think it needs to be in color aside from adding a red line or a darker line uh maybe i'm being a little fussy on that but uh no i, I get the i get the line part i i i, I certainly understand D dave what do you think uh, we, can, we can put the lines in as long as we don't need to have them all done in a timely manner if we're just getting a mock-up that's one thing um, something I'd like to consider, though, is this this first we're hearing about this short, this little short insert that's not a full page. And we could we could show both maps in miniature. And basically, I'm just I'm tossing this out there as an idea. You are invited. We're going to hold a workshop. And we're going to show you these watersheds. You'll be able to learn how to zoom right into where you live and you'll be able to see your outfalls. You can see where the water is going through your property. Alternatively, here are the links that are a little difficult to type in, but um, we can also make up short links for them and give them short links so they can type them in. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing it out there as an idea instead of trying to fit too much into an insert where people pull it out and go, huh, um, and, and just kind of look at it and get lost. Maybe we could have a shorter insert that said, you're invited to this, this is what we're gonna talk about. Um, and we could have more detail available i don't know how that we probably will get a lot less people with something like that than we'd like to address that's the con um so anyway i two things one yes i could draw the lines in uh, basically i think because we have an outfall map i believe available and i could kind of overlay that into into the um this map that i sent around the district map or i mean i'm sorry that's one thing. It could be color. It could be black and white. 
black and white's probably fine. Um, but we have to define this red line. It's going to have to be white enough so people see what they're doing and know what it is. Um, or alternatively, we could just say, basically, this is an introduction. We want to teach you all about this. Stop down to fairgrounds and see it. Um, and if you can't, hear the links. So we can do all of that. Um, getting something available to you, but I'll be traveling uh, from Sunday until you know the, the 15th when I get home. So my time is going to be limited. That's the other problem. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Uh, maybe, maybe we don't make this tax cycle. Well, no. if, we, if we don't make the tax cycle, then we don't have a, uh, a May or June uh, presentation. Um, but, uh, you know, Dave, uh, Bossy, if, if, you know, I'll, if you prepare one hard copy, it sounds like, uh, uh, then that's all we need uh, for it to be run off by whoever creates the insert. Um, I'm just wondering if it has to be two-sided, the map on one side and, and what we're trying to say in words on the other side. And I was gonna ask Mr. Franzuto if, if two-sided is, is a, uh, an option. I, um, or can what we have to say be written in a blank spot on on the map itself? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brace. The next tax bills oh. are for May 1, right? And after that, it's August 1. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it sounds like we're trying to jam an awful lot into a very short period of time. We might just shoot for August 1 and then then we would inform people that this is coming. And then we would say September, October, we're doing it when things have slowed down. Then we'd have it all together. I mean, Mr. Bossy's traveling. Uh, he's not back till the 15th. The print deadline is, is March 13th, which is, you know, six days away. Can we actually I get it to you? I, right. I don't know that that's the print deadline. I think that was for her comment to me was a, a mock-up. So I think that there may be a little bit of room in there. Uh, I, I think she was more trying to, um, you know, find out from the printer just what they needed to from us to, to, to get them thinking about it. Her, her comment was, Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I've got a. That is the one, next one, one or two sided color. I guess those are the, the two questions is one or two side, sided, sided, the paper color and the number of ink colors. So good. I would say, Mr. I'm sorry, Dave. Sorry, Dave. Um, I would say we go with two sided, but not color. One side has the whole thing, the whole enchilada, the whole, the whole watershed showing the whole harbor so people get the scale of it. But then the other side has the area we're focusing on, uh, which is basically downtown, right? Because um, I mentioned it in my letter, but, um, but. And that way people can see, okay, this is the watershed. Oh, I live here, you know, um, but we all know that the most egregious contributions to the harbor come from the outfall pipes that are in the town flowing right into the harbor. So that's that's what I think. And, and you can definitely redline the, the, the map that has, or dark line the map that is the whole thing. Yeah. And, and say something like area of focus, you know, and then see the other side for that. And then somewhere on the map, we have the links and the information and coming to a, you know, community room near you, um, this workshop. Now, as far as the Mr. workshop- Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Ginger. Well, I, I, I would 
I would say that I I think color maybe one or maybe at most two colors um, would be uh, better because people are used to looking at their property on Google Maps and seeing, you know, the the the. I think black and white says ignore me as a as a visual statement. Mm-hmm. I think that it, we're, we're trying to cram too much onto one piece of thing. We know a lot about it. I think we should focus on, I, I, I agree with just the harbor, but I think the people, the thing that people are least aware of are the storm drains and that it, we should just focus and do a one side on that and maybe with a light blue overlay of the street, that would be, um, you know, like a, a, a black for the street, you know, designations and a light blue overlay that, um, that, that would, that would be a, a way to pique people's attention without confusing them with too much information because it's not just that I'm getting older and my attention span is, is um, um, I'm trying to find a polite word, but I I can't. Um, but also, it's social media and everything else. It's it's just um, um, not um, it's not good with too much detail. Uh, just just get the the bare bones of what is something that is surprising, important, and um, uh, immediately visually comprehensible. That's that's my two cents. Certainly, uh, you know, color catches the eye, and I kind of like the idea of the light blue streets because uh, that would kind of depict uh, every street is like a little river leading to the harbor. Um, you said it. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I have a proposal. Yes, Dave. I, I, I'd like to propose that we we only focus for this insert on downtown, not just downtown, but on the 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 the, the drainage system into the, the the town portion of the harbor, um, because then we can zoom in some. We can mm-hmm. people may not be able to read street names, but they'll be able to. Streets will show up in in, in a in a picture in in, in on the map. Uh, um. And, and and cut out, cut out Pulpus Road while we're in it. All that. just 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 give a big picture of of the the extended portion of town that drains into the harbor, uh, mm-hmm. and fit that on one side, and on the back, an invitation. We're inviting you to this. Come learn about this. Um, but, go ahead. I'm open to ideas. Just, Mr. Thanks. Chairman. Yes, Ginger. Uh, I, 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 I thank you for uh, whoever was just speaking. That that's kind of what I was going for. Um, it would be nice to have on the back just some like, um, you know, uh, a little sort of fun fact. Did you know? And uh, we could, um, you know, how many window boxes there might be around downtown because. You know, those are those are fertilized, you know, uh, uh, sometimes I think daily with, uh, you know, um, and until the, the, the box overflows. So um, that w- if we could get a, you know, a, a, uh, a rough idea of, you know, how many how many window it's it, it's something we could we could do it this time of year easily enough just by walking down the street and counting window boxes, which I'm willing to do some of. Um, and that it would increase people's, um, you know, awareness of um, uh, uh, contributions that they don't really normally think about. Well, um, and big numbers always catch the eye as well. So another good idea, Ginger, if you're uh, you know, maybe take uh, a couple of blocks and count window boxes and come up with an average. Uh, <laughs> um, because I think uh, it's safe to say there are thousands of them. And, and I've seen, as you're mentioning, uh, you know, the, the watering cans uh, uh, being tilted up to the window boxes and uh, 
they're spilling over for sure. And, and uh, chances are there's some miracle grow in there or something as well uh, to keep those window boxes so bright. Um, so maybe, maybe I could offer to do a new, a new mock-up but in the next day or two that might show a, a more defined area on the front and kind of block out some text on the back and we could pass it around and people could input ideas for that block the area on the back or the front. I mean, if, I'll try in black and white and see if see how visible it is. It won't be blue, but uh, it may be gray enough that people can pick up, you know, recognize streets in town. Um, I could do both, but let me, um, I could offer, I could do that before I hit the road. Mr. Bossy, since it seems like the Natural Resources Department might pick up the tab, and maybe we should just shoot for color, one or two colors, not to try and take all their money, but you know, if we have the opportunity to do that. Um, and, I'm with you I, on that. Yeah. Yeah. I would also I would also say, um, Mr. Franzulo, if you can find out when our drop dead deadline is to you know, if if Mr. Bossy can produce the mock-up before the 13th. Then we can get it to your person, but if you could also find out from that person when we have to have it ready for them, then that would help us. If it's, you know, well, we, and we can we can also say that we can also agree, I guess, that if the price for the multicolor is too much for Carlson's budget, then we can always drop back to a black and white insert. This, yeah. this, this well, these, these emails that I've got are, are trying to ferret out the, the cost and or any additional costs it's going to be and you know kind of trying to find out where, where we're headed. So yeah, I mean we'll we'll try for color and if, if the board agrees if that doesn't work, we'll go I'll, I'll run that by Carlson. And then if that doesn't work, we'll go to black and white. I, I believe uh, we could reach out to the Nantucket Shellfish Association if there were costs that needed to be covered. Um, so so uh, let's try to push for, for the color. Uh, Josh, Dave, didn't you say you'd pay for this yourself? Yeah, I remember <laughs> saying that. No, I said I would, I would stuff the envelopes. Oh, all right. I I found a funding I found a I found a printing funding source. <laughs> I I think we can do that. Um, just a thought. Uh, um, if uh, first of all, if this coincides with, uh, does anybody know when the state of the harbor? Uh, It'll be July. And so uh, then the next tax mailing. It wouldn't be out before the state of the harbor, but I'm wondering if our presentation shouldn't be piggybacked uh, into or fit into uh, the agenda of the state of the harbor and we'd have uh, maybe a larger uh, audience to be presenting this to uh, something that people are already going to that it's also related to. Of course, we'd have to talk to the land council about this, but uh, just a thought. Tara, you had something to add. I was just curious, do you guys have like any idea ballpark how much it costs to print what you're trying to print? Any like a guess? It's the no, I, I I don't. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how many copies. I don't know that there's probably an increased cost because of the two sides. Uh, the the beauty of it is that they they print them. And it all gets folded together and puts it put in the envelope. So uh, it's not a matter of you know us making a bunch of copies and then going down to the the tax office and using their folding machine. So I, I think that you know there's a great benefit to having these people you know do, do the mechanics of it for us. I think Tara's hoping Tara's hoping she won't have to give up an intern. Is what she's hoping. <laughs> yeah, I'll give up something for this. Time. Sounds like it's we're just haggling over the money. If the process is done down at the tax office and they're covered, then they're just going to do the run, and it's cost of paper and ink, basically, yeah. and time. So, whatever that is, 
Hey, my friend Dave has it. So. I, I, I think we've got enough to, to go forward. Um, do you want to look at some dates so Dave Bossy can put that in the in the mock-up? Um, do you do you want to shoot for now or do you want to go in in late late summer? Let's do a mock-up and see if we can do it this this early one. Okay. And if we make it, I think the real question tonight is, can Peter's letter go out? Does anything we discussed change Peter's letter? No, I, I'm I not sure that it does. I don't think that it does either. I think that we need to get get that, that letter out. Game. I, I right. also, I also, being the skeptical person that I am, I don't want. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a statement here, and you, you, you got to bear with me. Is that don't be, dis don't be disappointed if the administration tells us that they don't want to do this. I, 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 I don't want everybody to, we, we will be disappointed, but I just want to, to say that, that, you know, they, they may not think this is a good idea. So my suggestion is we get that email into Erica and we continue to work on the, the fine points. That's a good point. Yeah. Sorry. That's Agreed. Sure. Let, let's move forward. Yep. Okay. All right. I think so, that's a yeah, we, we need to get our permission first. And and I think we've fine-tuned enough here at this point. See if we get permission. Uh, keep doing what you're going to do, Mr. Bossy and Mr. Franzuto and Mr. Brace, and, and, uh, we'll, but we'll, we'll see if we get permission. If we don't, uh, then, uh, you know, let's think about plan B and, and maybe, uh, where the, uh, uh, where somebody else can step in and help us like the shellfish association getting, getting this out there. Yeah, we can Sounds always, good. We can always, if we get shut down, we could always, you know, try and solicit a story in a in a local publication. Mm -hmm. We could, you know, find the money to run an ad that mm -hmm. that tells people how to go find their property on the on the on the page. We can, I mean, there's there's got to be other options if they tell us to get lost, which I, I don't think they will. But well, I appreciate Mr. Franzuto's pessimism. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, I have an example of what a, a more expanded map looks like. So you can start to pick up street names mm -hmm. or things, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so, as Dave played with that, you, mm -hmm. know, you can, you know, yeah, zero in. Mm -hmm. I just think that the way the email is currently written, we've kind of taken the guesswork out of it. They, there's not a whole lot of decisions that they have to make. Uh, the tax collector and the finance director have agreed that it's an appropriate insert. And I just think we, we keep moving forward. I, I don't think there's a whole lot for them to approve or disapprove unless they just decide it's not something they want to do. And we'll so I'll make, see us do. I'll make a motion to send that letter. I'll second that. Okay, the motion's made by Mr. Bossy, seconded by Mr. Anderson to send the letter. Any more discussion? All in favor, Mr. Bossy? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Ms. Andrews? Aye. Mr. Franzuto? Aye. Mr. Brace? Aye. The chair votes aye as well. Uh, I'm gonna back up quickly. I just said one question for Tara on uh, natural resources report. Uh, you mentioned Bob Orth and the eelgrass the restoration plan. And I'm imagining that restoration plan you spoke of with Bob Orth is separate from the Land Council's eelgrass restoration projects. It is. So this is just something, because we don't have an eelgrass restoration plan, we just have um, a section on eelgrass in the shellfish management plan that's very dated. Um, and it wasn't necessarily prioritized in the way that it needs to be prioritized today. So the Great Harbor Yacht Club contracted Bob Orth to help us formulate an eelgrass management plan moving forward with the idea that we will have a lot of 
um, input from the community and all the different players that are interested in the eelgrass and um, vetted by the public and also adopted by the town as this is the plan moving forward to do research on eelgrass. This is our priority. So if you want to use the boathouse, for example, you know, for tanks and stuff to do your research, it has to align with the town's priorities that have been defined and established. Okay. Uh, the reason I ask is, first of all, does does Mr. Orth, uh, is he boots to the ground? Will he be diving, surveying? No, he's just an advisor. So he's got a lot of experience with restoring eelgrass and running projects in the Chesapeake Bay. And so he's written a million papers on eelgrass restoration and has a lot of good knowledge on right. on how we can help our eelgrass. All right. So. What I'm getting to specifically uh, is the sediments and and eelgrass beds that are possibly smothered by so much eroding sand entering the harbor from from the shorelines and and. Uh, with the dredging and sediment transport plan coming into play, can somehow there be coordination uh, and and possibly implement at least a a pilot project of sorts? Find an area that is completely devoid of eelgrass uh, that could possibly be added to the dredging and sediment transport plan. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I, I look at uh, the point that's building up into the channel off of CO2 point, it's almost like another bend, and I call it point 1A being formed there, and how the horse shed has become so shallow that uh, scallopers are saying they simply can't scallop there. I don't know what the eelgrass uh, population, so to speak, is like there, but uh, uh, it, it, it's just one area that comes to mind. And also the land council's area uh, in Fifth Bend, I feel, is has a lot of sediment there and absolutely no eelgrass at all, of course, and that's why they chose that area. But uh, I would love to have seen that area be included in, in uh, dredging ahead of time somehow. But uh, I realize coordination needs to be done, permitting and approval and, and uh, uh, studies and so forth. So uh, I'm just hoping that at some point in the future, this all kind of comes together. Uh, yeah, and, and... I, I think that's our hope as well. And the sediment transport study is on, on paper for Bob to consider as well. I think mostly what is going to be prioritized first is getting a series of aerials and ground truthing and getting just a baseline of everything going on and just looking at all these projects that we have with potential to open up the haulover, you know, the feasibility of that and stuff considered into where we're going. Right now we have a lot of people, not really a lot, but quite a few people applying to do eelgrass work and restoration in kind of like a rogue way and they have independent funding and stuff like that and it's just like a little bit scary to me that you know people want to do stuff when the water quality isn't quite right to be successful and that sort of thing so i just feel like as a town we all need to coordinate and be on the same page and have a plan moving forward so that we can effectively use money and funding and people that are interested in doing the work thanks tara that's a lot of moving parts uh you know, which I imagine uh, are juggling, being juggled uh, around your desk, or, or and and or uh, Jeff's desk. So hopefully, it can all come together in a positive way. Um, did anybody else have any last questions on natural resources report? I, I do have more information on the dredging if you're interested in that right now okay. for um, my comment. Okay. Um, you let me know. Who oh. asked that Ginger. question? Ginger. Ginger, did you want to hear that now? Uh, sure. That would be great. Thank you. All right. 
I'll keep it short. Right now, this first part of the project is just dredging design. So it's not the actual dredging of the pond. They're just going to be taking a bunch of core samples. Um, it looks like it's going to happen not during tourist season. So anywhere beyond, you know, before May and after October, I think is what they said. And it's going to be anywhere from three to nine days of them taking these core samples. Um, there was bathymetry done in 2016 on the pond and they found in the southern portion a two foot accumulation of sediment and in the northern portion also two feet, but there was a small like 2.2 acre parcel that had accumulated six feet of sediment. So they're gonna go back and look at that and see how that's changed. And then with the samples, they'll do testing and figure out whether they can reuse the sediment or they can sell the sediment or they need to dispose of it. So that's what this is about. It's just kind of like a feasibility and what a design study. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tara. Back to old business, vineyard wind and south coast wind. Um, I just happened to notice on uh, Nantucket year-round community, it's a site on Facebook, uh, and it was uh, Janet McKay, I uh, put in uh, a link to a, a discussion by what appears to be a Maine lobsterman discussing how the construction will take place off the coast of Maine. And uh, I found it uh, rather interesting. It's it's available on YouTube. I'll try to get the link and, and send it out so you all can see it. Uh, they're proposing floating uh, turbines up there, and I guess these floating turbines rest on a 300 foot by 300 foot platform, which is basically a barge that is anchored to the ocean floor with three gigantic anchors. The anchor chains, each link is the size of a pickup truck, uh, and they find hilly areas to position them over so that the chain doesn't have to be so long. And he goes on to explain how hilly areas underwater are the most inhabited areas. So uh, I found it rather interesting. Uh, I hope uh, the board, I realize this is you know way outside of our three mile limit, so to speak, but uh, if there are negative effects that are gonna be happening uh, up and down the East Coast, uh, I, I, I believe it would be our duty to at least voice a concern. The board has anything they want to add with vineyard wind or south coast wind, which I will add that south coast wind has not chosen its wind turbine. For all we know, they could be floating wind turbines consisting of these 300 foot by 300 foot anchored barges that they're mounted to. I'm not sure, I don't think anybody is. Uh, technology is changing every day with these uh, uh, wind turbines. So, so uh, like I say, they haven't chosen the company that will be building theirs. Any discussion, questions, comments from the board? Anything new on green crabs? No, nothing new other than I did make the revisions and I passed it along to uh, Dave to uh, bring to his um, <clears throat> his meeting. Yeah, I, um, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I I notified, I talked to them today at the Harbor Plan meeting group and I told them that one of our dedicated members had done this research and the paper had been um, prepared and I'm going to get it to uh, Kim Starbuck pri primarily because I, I don't want to I don't I have the only good copy other than Dave Anderson I don't want to I don't want to lose the, the copy that I have and I want to get it submitted to them and then when it's appropriate to insert this along with any other discussions that the committee has about evasive species or whatever that that's when it'll get inserted but I, I'm uh, they were surprised that we had already started working on this and some other issues. So um, 
they're happy for the input and I'll, I'll get that to them. Thank you, Mr. Franzuto. Anything else, Green Crabs? Harbor Action Plan Committee, SHAB recommendations, any discussion? Well, we had a meeting today. Um, the next meeting will be March 22nd. I'm happy to report that Peter Brace was elected as the secretary. Thanks for sticking up for me, Dave. I, 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 well, I can't admit that I did, but I did say that, um, well, I can't say what I said. <laughs> what, what I said that was that you did a great job for us and, um, Thank you. The fact that you weren't there probably carried the day because they didn't have to look you in the eye. <laughs> yeah. I, um, whis I yeah. whispered in, in Jesse Bell's ear that I would be probably interested in. Well, she, she spoke on your behalf, and that's how the nomination got started. Yep. There you go. There you go. So, Let me keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's one of those be careful what you wish for. Um, yeah. so we're, we had a lengthy discussion about the planning study area. Uh, some revisions are going to be made that will trigger the, uh, the notice to proceed from the state and, uh, Jeff Carlson and, um, Jeff Carlson is going to do some mock-ups on what was proposed for the new planning area, which basically goes back to the, um, goes back to the watershed map, picks up a little bit more area around the Harbor for protection. There was some discussion about Maddock at Harbor. There was some discussion about Eel Point. Um, we did elect the chairman as Linda Williams. Vice chairman is, uh, uh, unfortunately the man's name escapes me. Peter. Bell. Peter who? Bell. Peter Bell. Thanks, Tara. You always been bailing me out, Tara. No, um, it can't be Peter Bell. No, it's Phil. Phil. I don't know his last name. Uh, Phil? First name Phil. Oh, why did I write down Peter? Maybe that's what I wrote down Peter twice. Okay, it's Phil someone. I'm sorry. But anyway, that's all I have to report. We we'll meet again on March 22nd. Oh, one other thing, there was some discussion um, and I did express Peter's concern about possibly meeting every two weeks and it's still up in the air, whether it's gonna be monthly or every two weeks, I guess it'll be discussed again on March 22nd. How many are on this committee? Um, it's like 10 of us, right? Yeah, there's at least 10. So Thank you. The Shellfish Association person, Land Bank, uh, Land Council, two members at large, Peter, myself, Linda Williams, and Phil. Phil. Okay. Who's Linda representing? With what uh, board or committee? And I don't know if she's rep representing zoning or I think or concom. I think she's representing concom. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Franzuto. Board members, comments, questions. Harbor Action Plan Committee. Sediment transport study and dredge plan. We've covered a bit of that in some previous discussion. Is there anything more this evening? Just what I recorded. Thank you, Tara. Pool water discharge. Any any news floating around it in your end of natural resources department on what's uh, culminating between Jeff and, and Roberto? I haven't, but I can okay. ask for an update. All right. Oh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Franzuto. Yeah, I'm sorry to digress. I just looked at my notes again. Um, I did express the board's concerns about the participation of the Harbor Master. Um, apparently the town's position is that they 
are shying away from um, appointing staff to uh, planning initiatives and she'll be called on uh, on an as needed basis as will other departments and department heads as necessary but I was assured that uh, she will be invited to participate uh, in the development of the plan. Okay, so you are relating this to the Harbor Action Plan. I, I did that. Meetings, okay. Thank you, Mr. Franzuto. And I'd just like to say to the board, I, you know, as, as uh, we had some lengthy discussion on this at our last meeting and, and uh, you know, uh, so, you know, I can always reach out to Sheila and, and ask her uh, to attend, you know, as, as she said, you know, in the past, um, you know, let her know ahead of time what we want to know and and uh, and she'll do her best to to be present here. Um, I realize there's some things going on in the harbor that she could update us on. There was an update in the newspaper about the uh, bulkhead and uh, its progress. Um, so uh, I'd be glad to invite her in if the board so wishes. Health of the harbor, stormwater runoff and harbor impacts. Uh, we worked on this quite a bit with our brochure. If there's anything new to be discussed, uh, do so now. Sure, we'll move. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Franzuto. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm such a uh, pain. Um, in the Harbor Plan, when you guys have a chance, take a look at uh, figure 3.6 and three, figure 3.7 towards the end of the plan, it'll show you the catch basins uh, and then you can extrapolate from that that those catch basins have direct discharge to the harbor. So uh, 3.6 and 3.7, there's a drawing, uh, a, ch a map showing that. Is that in here? I, I don't know if it is. There. <laughs> Was there... I think he's talking about the actually harbor plan. Oh, the actual plan, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's in, the, it's in the current harbor plan or the one we're updating. It's in, towards the back. And before I forget, Dave Bossy, through you, Mr. Chairman, Dave Bossy, would you get me whenever and however you can get me whatever you want me to try and submit for the mock up? And he's not. Yes. Talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. I'm uh, just trying to make a note 3.6 and 3.7. In the old harbor update plan? Yes. Okay. I was just trying to, I was over my phone making notes on the other app. Hold on. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'll send it off to you. I'm going to try to work on that tomorrow. Whenever, whenever you can. Okay. Thank you, Dave and Dave. New business. Coastal Resilience Advisory Board. Do we have an update, Mr. Brace? We do not. They canceled the meeting um, for today because there weren't enough people for a quorum because it's the remnants of vacation. And that's what messed me up with today's um, Harbor Plan Committee meeting. I had in my mind that a meeting was canceled. And then in the afternoon, I get the email from Kim Starbuck that was the uh, you know, the meeting length, I was like, what, what is this? You know, so I just, no worries. Thank you, Mr. Brace. So no report. Uh, we will, our next meeting will be on the 14th and after that, the 28th. Okay. I'll definitely have a report for our meeting on the 21st. Questions or comments from the board? Public questions or comments? Anything any board members would like to add for discussion to our next meeting? Um, yeah, I think I think we're we're in our own sort of quarterly system. So we did our first quarter report to the select board, um, and that was you know middle of December. So now you know we're 
we're almost three months out. So, you know, I don't think we're really following the true quarter system, but every three months. So maybe I would, you know, for the next meeting, work on a, a report yeah. of what we've been doing and have that on the agenda and then have you guys, you know, give me a hard time about it. Okay. Yeah. Good well, idea. Yep. Keep up with it. Make sure because I did, I did see um, Brooke Moore in one of my yoga classes. She's trying to get me to run for select board. And I was like, what are you out of your mind? <laughs> <laughs> but I did listen to her, and uh, um, she, she, without prompting, she noted that she really appreciated us informing the select board with what we're doing. So somebody's paying attention. Nice. Thanks for sharing that, Mr. Brace. You're simply adding to your secretarial. Uh, Yes, I know. Duties with the quarterly report, but it is it's a, easy to write. Good idea. Okay. All my head. So. Yeah, good. Public questions or comment? Uh, next meeting is March 21st. Okay. Boy, Tom, I, I would just like to make sure we keep on top of what's going on with some of these pools. This was the pool that was shot down. That was out on Main Avenue in uh, Smith Point. Mm -hmm. Makes no sense to put a pool with chemicals in a area that's imminent that it's going to be flooded. At the Eel Skin Inn. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I, just, I just want. I think we should, as a group, try to get a, a better feel where these pools are going and be mm -hmm. able to make other recommendations because mm -hmm. the historic district shot it down. It's like. But then they, they appealed it to the select board, right? That they, they remanded it back to them to figure it out. Yes. Like they always do. And so the HTC is going to deny it again, and then it's going to go to court. And then, you know, by then, hopefully the ocean will come up and there won't be any place to put a pool. Exactly. But, but I think there's other areas that could be affected by the pool. Let's not hope that. But well, let's not hope that. But it's why do you need a pool if you the ocean? Mr. Chair. Ginger. Apparently, there's a, uh, uh, a a thing by the Zoning Board of Appeals that um, there's already a pre-existing pool at 23 Orange Street. I'm not, I don't I haven't looked at it. I don't know where that is, but uh, they've they've been approved for um, uh, an expanded um, uh, expansion of their ground cover beyond uh, beyond what the limit is. I think. Uh, I haven't looked at the plan yet, but I just um, I'm just catching up with the mail. So there, just because the historic district said no more pools doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be any. Right, twenty three is uh, our odd numbers on Orange Street, uh, east or west. Do you know? Seeing as I that's don't. good. <laughs> This is a useless piece of information running around the back of my brain, but I believe Steve Bender lives at 73 Orange Street. Okay, so that would be west side of Orange. Uh, all right. Would I know that? 52, I lived at 52 Orange Street in 1987, and that was on the, on the harbor side. There so, you go. So the even numbers are on the harbor side. Um, just curious. Uh, I mean, it, it just look at the HDC uh, approvals, and uh, there's two, three, four, sometimes five, six, or seven pools approved every week. Uh, and uh, you know, it, 100 feet of of uh, setback for Concom just doesn't seem like enough. Sometimes I'm very familiar with that Eel Skin Inn property. I used to work mm -hmm. for Tom Lazor there, and. Uh, Main Ave, you used to be able to get on just after the bridge and go around and end up uh, over to Massachusetts Ave, and you can't anymore. The dunes were lost, to the end of the road was lost, and the stilt house uh, had to be taken down. Uh, and it's, it's a vulnerable area. You know? So there's certainly pools being put in many vulnerable areas. It's a matter of how they're handled and, and maintained. 
If there's no more discussion tonight, uh, just uh, one more reminder, our next meeting is March 21st. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brace, seconded by Mr. Anderson to adjourn tonight's meeting. All in favor, Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Brace? Aye. Ms. Andrews? Aye. Mr. Bossy? Aye. Mr. Franzuto? Aye. The chair votes aye as well. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.